Okay, you roll out of bed, you get yourself amped up, you get yourself psyched up, you look at that frozen cold plunge or the icy water and you're just like, okay, I gotta do this. It's just what I gotta do to help increase my brown adipose tissue and, and just get all this metabolic benefit. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there. There are benefits to cold plunging, but when it comes down to increasing brown adipose tissue, which is the non-shivering thermogenesis, that cold plunge is not helping you much. And I say this, very, very honestly, because I use a cold plunge. I love it. I love what it does to my brain. I love all the attributes of it. But as far as helping your body create more of the brown fat that helps you dissipate energy as heat, it's not doing much. But let me explain, because there is some stuff that you can do that's actually easier and not as miserable. After today's video, I encourage you to try Colostrum. You've probably heard people talking about it before. There's a company called Armra. Now, Colostrum is not a supplement. It's more of a whole food. Okay, so in this particular case, Armra is 100% bovine colostrum that comes after the calves have been fed. So it's perfectly sustainable, but also comes from grass-fed cows, but also from a co-op of dairy farmers. So it's ensuring really high quality product. Now what's interesting about this colostrum from Armra is that it is not heat pasteurized like most colostrum, making it the most bioavailable colostrum that you can find. What that means is that like when you heat pasteurize it, it breaks everything down, the 400 different living nutrients that are in colostrum. So with their cold chain technology, it makes it so that it's ensuring the delivery of this stuff. The way that I've been using colostrum is to help with recovery. There's some literature that suggests that it's up to a 50% increase in recovery. Obviously very good for the gut. It can help rebuild that gut barrier, but overall just gives you a good sense of feeling energized and feeling recovered. So that link down below is going to get you 15% off. It's tryarmra.com slash Thomas. Again, that's tryarmra.com slash Thomas. So check them out. The Clinical Journal of Endocrinology and Metabolism looked into this, okay? They're like, okay, cold plunging is popular. Is cold plunging really gonna do anything? Like, no, we think it's more just like this mild exposure, right? So what they did is they took subjects and they divided them into two groups and they said, one group's gonna sleep at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, one group's gonna sleep at 66 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll have them switch, okay? Ultimately, what they found is that the group that slept in 66 degrees had greater energy expenditure. So they were burning more calories sleeping in a cooler temperature. Only 66 degrees, not even that cold. They also had more brown adipose tissue production. This is fascinating. So when you understand how brown adipose tissue works, it makes some sense. So if we jump into a cold plunge, we're gonna shiver a little bit. And even if we can control our breath and stuff like that, like we're still having sort of this like probably micro level shivering that's occurring. It's too cold. It actually shocks the body, which is great for neurogenesis. It's great for neurological function. It's great for mental acuity. I am not raining on cold plunge. Okay, but it's not activating this brown fat because the idea behind brown fat is to help carry you through moderately cold times. So you need to be able to create just enough stimulus. Now, what I mean by that is if you were to try to run a marathon, okay, and you wanna work your way up to being a better runner, you're not gonna just run out the door and try to run a marathon today, right? You might run a mile and inflict a little bit of stress, maybe you'll be a little sore. Then next time you'll run two miles, maybe three, and you'll increase your mileage and try to increase that pain threshold a little bit, but never saying like, I'm gonna go balls to the wall, all volume, and try to debilitate myself, right? You're gonna build adaptation. Now, most of us living in climate controlled environments and things like that, it's to get the benefit of your body adapting to non-shivering thermogenesis, you don't need to be exposed to ridiculous amounts. Jumping in a cold plunge for the sake of brown fat activation is like running out the door and running a marathon today. Okay, it's not the same that you're trying to like do here. A cold plunge, again, not raining on it. It's great for a completely different set of benefits. I will say one of the ways that you can get a benefit from brown fat activation with a cold plunge is if you get in a cold plunge and then you get out of it and you allow your body to warm up to normal temperature in the ambient air. The problem is this takes a while and you also have a period of time where you're almost in cold shock where you're still just sort of in that shivering mode, right? A lot of times you get in the cold plunge and you're fine, you can stabilize and you can get your head straight, but then when you get out is when you get cold. So you need to like get through that stage and then you've got a nice little sweet spot of like 20 minutes or so where you're getting the brown fat activation. I think it makes a lot more sense 
to just turn the AC up and sit in a room that's a little bit cool, right? Like that has a huge benefit. Or if it's cooler outside, 58 to 60 degrees is right where you want to be. So there's some other evidence to back that up. There was a study that took a look at subjects that were at a 62.5 degree Fahrenheit temperature. Okay, they found that if they just sat in that temperature, whether they were active or not, for just a couple hours per day for six weeks, they literally dropped body fat, increased the activity and the mitochondrial density of their brown fat, and they also ended up decreasing white fat, and increasing the beijing of white fat to brown fat. Just by exposing themselves to moderately cold temperatures for a couple hours each day for six weeks. And you don't even have to do it every day. So what are some ways that you can do this? Well, if for one, you're interested in like getting in a cooler bath or something like that, you can do that. But that seems kind of miserable, sitting in like a 65 degree bath. And water immersion is different than just ambient, right? So I recommend, okay, taking one room of your house or something like that and getting a portable air conditioner. It's cheaper than a cold plunge because you can get one at Costco for like two or 300 bucks and just cool off that room. Have a cold room, sit in your office and work in your office or at a stand-up desk and crank it down to like 56 to 60 degrees and do that for a couple of hours. The amount of energy it's gonna cost in terms of like actual energy to run that air, air conditioning unit is pretty small. You're probably looking a couple bucks a month realistically because they're pretty efficient and it works quite well. They also make different things. There's a company called uh, Cool to Shape where you can actually wear sort of some gear that helps cool you down. That works really well too. Then you can literally work out in it as well. For the lion's share of the year in a lot of places, you're actually sitting in that sweet spot. Maybe it's 50 degrees, maybe it's 60 degrees, but you can just go outside and just let yourself be exposed to the cool air. Go for a run with your shirt off when it's 55 degrees or 60 degrees, when that might be unconventional, right? These kinds of things work. The other thing, get in the cold plunge, get out into the ambient air. Now people will say, you don't wanna get out of a cold plunge and go straight into a sauna. That's a common question, right? I disagree. I feel like you can get out of a cold plunge and get into a sauna and still get some benefit. It's just shortening it. Like how long are you going to be shivering if you don't get in a sauna, right? Just mention that only because people bring it up. So at the end of the day, is your cold plunge worthless? It's not. You're still getting a benefit there. But if the goal is brown fat activation, you need to look a little further than that. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.